Hey guys, Sarah here with Room for Tuesday. I promise to share how I make a mood board and I'm going to take you through the steps in Photoshop. All right guys, I promise to show you how I make a mood board and I figured I would just start with the most complex one. So I do a few different mood boards on the blog. The first is kind of like this room mood board that I always use to help me create my design plans. This is an example of our guest bath. Um, you'll also notice the monthly mood boards that I do, as well as, you know, kind of like a get the look roundup. Today, I wanted to show you how to do my design planning mood board. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I use Photoshop, Creative Cloud for that. And um, I already kind of have this file that I've set up. And then I'm just going to show you how to achieve the look. So first I'm going to begin by opening Photoshop. And I've, I usually notate, you know, what the room is I'm designing just for labeling purposes so that I can keep track of everything. So if you want to add type, um, you could definitely do that in the beginning or at the end. It doesn't matter. I also like to use hotkeys. So command T is type or you can just click the T and type directly onto your uh, artboard. So to get started, I like to put all of the products that go on this mood board into a folder. Now I haven't put all of them in here because it's a lot and for time purposes, I just wanted to kind of um, share the Cliff Notes version of this, but I'm going to pull all of these products, highlight them and pull them into Photoshop. So you'll notice lots of different tabs will start to open and I can, you know, click through and see what items I'll be putting on my mood board and I'll show you how I do that. So, all right, let's get started. I'm going to start with an easy one. So let's do this hook. This hook is pretty dark and um, it will be really easy to use the magic wand tool here and just outline that, click it, and then you're going to select the inverse. You can also click Command I to do that. And then I'll drag it over to my mood board and drop that into place. Now, this is way too large. Obviously, it's not realistic to scale, so I'm going to transform that by clicking Command T, and I'm going to shrink it down and scale it to whatever size is appropriate. So. That's super easy. Now, if I didn't want to remove the background on this, uh, since it's a white background anyway, I can definitely um, I can definitely deselect that and then just pull the entire thing over. Now, you'll notice since it does have a white background, if I put it up here, it'll cover the copy. So. As long as it has a white background, you don't necessarily have to cut around it. You can just come over here and hit multiply. And that way, when it gets close to something, it doesn't really overlap and you can still scale it the same as you normally would, but that's just kind of an alternative method. So anyway, we've got our hook over there. I'm gonna close out and as I add products, I just close the windows. Now again, the toilet, is against a white background. I'm just kind of going to cut around it quickly for now. You know, scale it to however I see fit. And then I'm just going to continue this process with everything. Um, it's pretty time consuming to put together a mood board, but in my experience, it's always worth it because it gives you a really good visual of how a space will look and come together with all of your products. Okay, now this is tricky. So this is the hardware we used in my previous office. And since I had a great high res image of that, I was just going to kind of cut around it here using my own image instead of the Lowe's image because they didn't have a photo of it straight on. And I really wanted this for a more accurate representation of the vanity. So you'll notice I'm using the poly lasso tool to just cut around it and this is pretty time consuming but once I get one um, cut around see now it just connected that's not what we want it to do so unfortunately I have to start over on that this only happens every once in a while so don't be alarmed if that happens to you just gonna quickly cut around here 
and it doesn't have to be super perfect because this is going to be on the bathroom vanity and it's going to be super small so these tiny little details won't really matter or show up okay so now that i have that entire thing selected i'm going to use my um, tool here to cut it over to the mood board that i'm working on and you can see it's gigantic because i took this high-res photo so it's not a regular product image and i'm just going to kind of flip it around and i'll save that for later when it's time to put it on the vanity i'm going to go ahead and x out of that window because i'm done with that um, this is the tile the bathroom tile and I don't know it might be too light yep so I tried to use the magic wand tool and the tile is too white to let me grab it with the wand so I'm gonna deselect that and um, cut around it with my lasso tool again and again once I do one of these it will be pretty easy it's just initially getting it over there to work with is the time-consuming part and you can always do this once it's on your art board or your mood board as well. You don't have to do everything up front. So I might just do this one side for now and then I'll handle the rest of it when I get it over there. So I'm, I've selected that, pulled it over. You can see that this side is cut out, doesn't interfere with the text. This bottom side, I still need to cut. And that's totally fine. So anyway, now we're going to move on to the last piece of the puzzle that I'm going to show you, and that's the vanity. Um, in opening my finished file here, you'll notice that the vanity in this file looks nothing like the product image here. We have all of this hardware on here, these ugly backsplashes and the countertop, uh, all of the hardware is on here. The vanity isn't as tall as I have it here. So I've already photoshopped this one obviously and it's more representative of what our bathroom actually looks like and turned out like. So I'm just going to show you how I got this vanity to look like this and kind of modified it using Photoshop. So I'm just going to quickly cut around it. Now I know I don't want these uh, backsplashes so I'm cutting, I'm cutting them off with the poly tool. And again, this can be pretty quick. Just cutting off the faucet and everything. And then I'll just kind of rough cut that in. So there we go. I'm going to pull the entire thing over here. And now I can really zoom in by hitting Command Plus and work with what I've got. So I wasn't using the mirrors. I'm not going to be using this existing hardware. I'm not going to use the faucets. So basically I want it to look more accurate to what the design will actually look like. So I'm going to click on the vanity. It's layer 36 and you can label your layers, which I'll show you later on. But um, for now, I'm not going to label it. I'm going to click on my healing tool and I'm going to get rid of this hardware. So it's really easy to get rid of this band-aid tool here and I'm using the spot healing brush so let's do this and again it doesn't have to be perfect it's just a mood board you're just trying to get a more accurate representation of your design plan if you're making adjustments so now, again, you'll notice that there are some weird shadows happening over here. You can definitely edit those out as well. If you don't want to use the healing brush, another option is to grab your eyedropper tool and then use a brush to just brush that shadow out and cover it up. So it's another option. Um, yeah, it's this again is the more time consuming part of the process but it definitely will help you get a better visual and the further you zoom in i find it's easier to work so you'll notice me zooming in and out a lot and then again we have this shadow here which is pretty easy to get rid of i'm not making it super perfect but i think you get the point 
And then these need to go away. So I'm just kind of slowly getting rid of the hardware with the spot healing brush tool. And if it doesn't want to go away, you can kind of zoom in and just toy with it. And again, another alternative is using the brush tool. So now I'm just kind of like brushing this one out for the sake of time. I think I might do the same over here. That worked out pretty well. So I'm just gonna brush it out and then I'll correct these little shadows with the healing brush tool. And I'll brush, brush this last piece of hardware out and then we can start really making the modifi modifications and turning it into the vanity that we want to see. So that's kind of, that gives you a rough visual of how the vanity looks. Now, if you remember, we actually ended up adding a shelf under this drawer. In my original plan, we were planning to just add negative space up here and have the crown connect to the ceiling because our ceilings are tall and we just needed to extend that. So. Um, we actually ended up putting a shelf here to push everything up toward the ceiling. So if I wanted to bring this entire thing up and add a shelf or whatever, I can just highlight that section and pull it upward and then, you know, add a shelf here if I wanted to. So that's another modification you can make if you want, but for the sake of time, I'm going to start adding the hardware that I previously photoshopped out. I want to bring this layer to the top so that it sits on top of the vanity and I'm going to scale it to size and then start adding the hardware to the vanity. It's really easy to do this. You can just duplicate your layer, drag it down. You can use hotkeys for this as well. I'm trying not to use hotkeys because it's probably more difficult for you to see what I'm doing in that way. And then again, you can duplicate multiple layers at a time. So I just copied two of these and I'm gonna shift them over here where they belong. feel a little bit big for the drawers so I'm gonna make these I'm gonna cheat them just a little bit sometimes you have to do that so once you have those where you like feel free to duplicate them as a pair push them over to the other side and then of course we have these on the bottom depending on where you want those to live So yeah, however you wanna do the hardware, that's a great way to mock that up. And again, I'm just duplicating. It's super easy to add the hardware back in. I do hit Command S occasionally, and that's just saving the document. So anyway, from our original file, I've already kind of cut out these widespread faucets like I did these previous products, and then I am just going to size those and drop them onto the vanity where they belong. And again, I'm going to duplicate that since it is a double sink vanity. And now my countertops are black and I actually never got around to photoshopping that part, but let's see what we can do here. There are a couple options. We can either pull in the actual material and replace this. Or we could just darken this for a visual. So I'm gonna go to hue and saturation and pull it really dark. Now I'm gonna have to do this maybe a time or two to get it kind of how I want, but I'm gonna mask it out by hitting Command I, and then I'm gonna grab my brush tool and brush this countertop black. Now it doesn't have to be perfectly clean looking. I'll cut around it and then you'll see how it turns out. But it's really quite easy and it gives you a better visual of what the end result will look like. So I probably should have done this the first time around. And again, this is a little dark. You'll notice if I play with it here, you can really get a good visual. So I'm actually going to lighten it up and that way I can clean up these edges. So I've zoomed in here 
and I'm just gonna do one surface at a time. I'm gonna cut around, again, I'm using my lasso. I'm gonna cut around these countertop surfaces. Sorry guys, my allergies are out of control. And I'm gonna delete that so that we get a nice clean countertop edge line. And I'm gonna do that with all three of these countertops, just so we get a really crisp, realistic line. So I'm deleting you know, the mess I made with the brush tool. That's why I said definitely don't be careful with that. It's a waste of time when you can just quickly get rid of it. All right, so we're almost done here. Just getting rid of this last messy bit. Now I am able to make these countertops um, dark like they normally would be in real life. So I can play with this tool darken them, lighten them as needed. If I want to go white, I can lighten it all the way. If I want them to be black, I'll just darken it up a little bit. So this is probably more realistic as to what the vanity actually looks like. Now, given this is the vanity layer over here, see if I turn it off and on, it disappears. I'm going to merge these two layers. That way the countertops stay black and I don't have to worry. So I'm just gonna merge those two and now, you know, the countertops are forever black. All right, so next up is tile. You're probably wondering how in the world do you get the floor tile to have perspective and look like a floor? So um, here's how I did that. I took a tile piece and again, I've cut around most of these sides, but not all of the sides, so um, I might need to do that. But I'm gonna duplicate that layer, and I kind of just stack them up like I would in real life. Like I'm digitally tiling. I might have to straighten it a little bit so that it fits better, but you get the point. So now I'm gonna duplicate both of these and make a longer line of tile. And you can you know, keep doing this and straightening or whatever needs to be taken care of, however you see fit. But you know, for the most part, that gives you a good visual. So now I'm going to um, highlight all four of these and group those layers. Actually, I'm going to merge, merge the layers. So then I am going to place, position them wherever I want. I'm gonna bring them to the front So that they're in front of the vanity. I sometimes will cut a clean line too so you can get better perspective and push it right up to the vanity here. But um, anyway, you're going to want to click Edit, Transform, Distort. Now, um, to give this perspective, you know, you kind of want to keep an eye on, on um, your perspective lines and I can always shrink this down depending on the scale I can shift it make it more dramatic obviously this is really really big so I should probably shrink it closer to size that's probably a bit more realistic and sometimes I won't even do the whole floor I'll just kind of hang it on the edge like that like I did here so that gives me a pretty good idea of what the floor tile is going to look like in a better perspective. All right, and uh, next let's go ahead and add in some of the vanity items. So I'm going to grab them. Since I've already cut them out in this file, I'm just kind of going to pull them over. That was fairly easy and straightforward. I don't think you guys will have a problem inserting products into the file, but I'll kind of position those where I want them using my selection tool. I'm gonna go ahead and grab these pendant lights. I'm working on a little different scale on this file, which is totally fine. You can kind of shift the text out of the way. So anyway, this is pretty this is pretty accurate as to what the vanity looks like. Now you'll notice in this file, this is where we've added the burl vanity. So I'll go ahead and pull those items over and just kind of continue building building the vignette. But the vanity goes directly underneath the countertop and it kind of fits in there nicely like that. As does the cute little ottoman. 
kind of just tuck it in there. So this is really kind of what our bathroom looks like. And then now you'll notice the shower and the toilet area. So right now we, let's go ahead and X out of that file. We have the toilet here and it looks nothing like this toilet. So just for the sake of comparison, I'm gonna drag this entire vignette over here just as a comparison. And I'll get this stuff out of the way. Alrighty, so as you know, we put a black seat on the toilet. Whoops, this guy didn't get carried over. I'm, I'm hitting Command Z for undo, by the way. So this toilet has a black seat and a brass lever. Now this is actually a different lever. I just pulled it from the Lowe's site like any other product, but it's grouped now. So I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But as for the toilet seat, we're gonna do the same thing we did to the vanity top. We're gonna click on the toilet, come up here to hue saturation and we're just gonna decrease that. And I'm gonna paint it in with our brush tool. And again, you don't have to be clean about this because we're gonna cut around it. You just really for the sake of time, brush it in there. And then I'm gonna lighten it up, zoom in, and I'm gonna cut around that toilet seat, which is kind of a really weird thing to do in Photoshop because I feel like unless you're a designer, that's just like, you're not editing toilets, right? So obviously if you went to the Lowe's website and typed in black toilet seat and found the toilet seat that you are using in the design plan, it's not gonna be shot in this way. So this is just a better way to get a color representation without having to manipulate a product photo or shoot it yourself. I mask things like this all the time. Okay, so now we're just gonna darken it to our liking. And again, see if there's a little bit of white here. I can come back in with the brush and kind of just brush it back in and cover that up so that it looks a little bit more neat. Now that's being really picky. I'm not that precise in real life. So again, I'm gonna highlight the toilet layer and the mask layer and I'm going to merge those so that the toilet seat can't be undone. And as for the lever, I could use this lever that I pulled from their website. It looked just like this and then I just shrunk it down, you know, and put it on top of the toilet. Or I could change the color of this one. Now, this time around, we would probably want to do a couple different things. If we did color balance, we could make it a little bit more yellow. So let me go in and brush it, show you what that looks like. Now it still looks too yellow and not very bronze. So I could, you know, adjust the red a little bit. I could even go into my saturation and push it a little bit further so that it gets bright. I can skew it in one direction or other or the other. I can, you know, bring the color down. So until I get that what I want what I want it to look like, I'll just mask it in. And that feels a little bit more representative of the actual color. So I'm gonna take these masked layers and the toilet and merge all of them. Oops. And now we have a toilet that looks like our actual toilet. And now if you're wondering about how I created this fun little, you know, wall and the opposing wall, that was another situation like the floor tile. So just for the purposes of time, I'll pull this area out. This is what I started with. I used subway tiles and I kind of just made them into a grid pattern. You can also find, you can just like search subway tiles on Google and then pull in a background if you don't want to duplicate a bunch. And then I just added in these products that I used, the trim pieces and duplicated them and kind of created this just grid. And I grouped everything together just like I did the floor tile. And I'm gonna send this to the very bottom of our layer stack so that it lives behind our products. 
Now again, you'll remember I didn't take the time to cut around my toilet. So now is the time to do that. Since it is white, I'll need to use my poly tool. The magic wand probably won't pick up on that. I'm just quickly doing this. I'm sorry that it's in real time. I know this is probably not super fun to watch, but this is what goes in into every mood board, blog project, design project I do, and it is very time consuming. So you can probably estimate how much time I spend doing this. It's a lot of computer time. And again, um, usually I use a Wacom bamboo tablet. I have the Intuos one, and right now I'm using my mouse because my battery's dead. So typically I'm just a little bit quicker than this. I'd highly recommend getting a tablet if you're editing a lot because it's just an easier, more organic motion on your hand rather than clicking a mouse. It's just a little bit more ergonomic. cut away that last piece and then we'll be ready to kind of create our walls. And as you'll notice here, um, these are the, the base pieces. So, you know, I can add those in there as well. Let's just uh, make our toilet a little bit smaller so that the scale is right. And we'll add in the base. So again, I'm just duplicating these Alrighty, there we go. And I'm going to group all of this. So I'm gonna merge these layers. Now my toilet can come up to the front of that vignette. When you group things, it brings it to the top. All right, so that feels a lot better. Now I want to create this side wall that you're seeing here. So I'm going to duplicate my wall of tile. I'm going to line it up here. And I'm actually gonna trim some of the edge off because this wall isn't that long. So I'm just kind of gonna get, get rid of a part of it. And I'm gonna come back here to transform, distort, and do the same exact thing I did with this floor tile. I'm just gonna kind of pull it up so that you can get a better idea of the perspective and create a wall there. So now you're getting a better feel for what this toilet niche or water closet looks like. And you can also adjust, you know, where it cuts off and create a more straight line so that it looks a bit more seamless. But that's really the gist of it. And then again, I've kind of added a different typeface for copy. I like to label different areas in a space. And... Um, you know, I did the same exact th exact thing with this shower here. I just duplicated the subway tile and adjusted the perspective, added the plumbing fixtures, and then kind of dropped in the tile for a good visual. But this is really how I create a mood board for a design plan. It's not too difficult. It's really simple. It's just time consuming and takes a lot of product cutting. So that's really all there is to it. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And I'd also love to hear if you would like to see any of these other mood boards. Like the process for a monthly mood board is very different than the um, get the look mood board or the one that we just finished, which is the product, the product design like in the space. Also, did you guys notice I need to... Uh, take the dogs on a walk. So that's probably my cue to hop off here, but I hope this was helpful in learning a little bit more about my process and Photoshop. Thanks so much. Bye.